What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing Overpass 2 Hacked. It is about some hackers hacked our Overpass system and we got to hack back in. We're going to be looking at a PCAP file with Wireshark then hacking back into the system. Alright, let's get into it. What's up guys? Here we are with Try Hack Me. We got Overpass 2 opened up. Um, so what happened was Overpass has been hacked. The SOC team noticed some suspicious activity on a late night and can you work out how the attacker got in and hack your way back into the overpass production server yes we can alright so download your task files I already did that so we'll go ahead and open those up with Wireshark so go to downloads we got overpass 2.pcapng so Wireshark open that up um, I like to kind of uh, mess with the Wireshark settings a little bit so we can kind of go through that uh, if you want to add or subtract a column you can simply right click the columns go to column preferences click this plus sign and choose whatever column you want to add there is a ton of them so if you want to do that you can um, I have all the columns up I need so I'm going to subtract that one click OK and here's the Wireshark setup. All right, so starting out, let's go ahead and start looking at these packets. It looks like the uh, source of the attacker is 192.168.170.145 with our uh, overpass production server being at this IP address and they're connecting to us with uh, source port 47732 and connecting to our production server at port 80. So scrolling down, let's kind of see, look, uh, they requested the development page with their git request. Um, we can kind of look at that with follow and TCP stream. And looks like nothing to really look at here. Uh, scrolling down, exit out of that filter. Um, scrolling down, we can see they did a post request to development upload.php we can check that out with follow TCP stream and looks like they uploaded a file with file name payload.php with this payload which is just a PHP payload um, using netcat to get a reverse then coming down here it is uploaded to development uploads page I'm scrolling down looks like there's nothing else here go ahead and exit out of that let's go see if we can answer some of these questions uh, what was the URL of the page they used to upload a reverse shell development and what payload did the attacker use to gain access we just looked at that so let's go back to that follow TCP stream and here was the payload they uploaded so let's enter that. And what password did the attacker use to privesque? Let's see, scroll down. Um, that was all that was there. Let's try and find that password. So looks like this is where they caught their reverse shell and they ran ID and figured out their WW data user and then they ran a Python command to get a PTY shell pretty much to stabilize the shell um, they printed overpass file to the screen and then looks like they switched user to James and used this password so is this the Priv escalation password. Let's see what password did the attacker use to privisk. That is correct. All right. How did the attacker establish persistence? Okay. So moving on, they went to their home directory and they typed sudo l wrong and they typed the sudo l command, which is going to tell him the commands. He can invoke as the sudo user. User James may run the following commands on overpass production. Um, all. Okay. Well, that's good. 
and so then he went ahead and sudo cat etsy shadow to print out the etsy shadow file and he got all these hashes and then he downloaded ssh backdoor from a git repository using the git clone command and that downloads right here scrolling down he changed directories into the ssh backdoor he made some ssh keys and he saved them to IDRSA, which is normal. Um, he made his backdoor file executable. He ran his backdoor file. And the SSH backdoor is started on 000, 000 port 2222. All right, lots of information there. Let's go see if we can answer some of these questions. How did the attacker establish persistence? Okay. With the SSH backdoor. Okay. And using the fast track word list, how many of the system passwords were crackable? All right, guys, now we need to take all those hashes we found, get them into a file and see which ones we can crack. Let's do it. All right, so I went ahead and put all our hashes into a file at hashes.txt, and we got those from the PCAP we analyzed right up here. And I put all those hashes into this file, and now we can crack them. So they did say use the fasttrack.txt file, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. Now we're going to use Hashcat and get those cracked. Okay, so first we need to check uh, what kind of hashes we have. So do hash ID hashes.txt. And it looks like we got SHA 512 crypt. Okay, now we can type out our Hashcat command. So Hashcat A0 and 1800 okay looks like hashcat was able to crack four of the five passwords and we got them all right here so let's go answer that question four and on to the next section. Okay, task two, we have this code for the back door they installed, and now we need to analyze it. So let's go get that address. So it's right here where they get cloned. Copy. I right, go ahead and copy this, go back to our terminal and get clone SSH backdoor. All right, uh, change directory into that SSH backdoor file. Let's see nano main dot go. All right, so we got the main dot go file opened. Um, I do not know much Golang, but uh, I was kind of able to figure out what it's asking for. First question, what's the default hash for the back door? Uh, we got this variable hash string right here. Copy that. Paste it in. And what it's, what's the hard-coded salt for the back door? Um, I was kind of able to figure this out from uh, scrolling all the way at the bottom. We got this function password handler and it calls uh, 
verify pass, which has a hash, um, a string of characters right here, and a password. And so we look at verify pass, um, verify pass function right here, which is the hash, a hash, a salt, and a password. And so that middle one would be the salt. So that string of characters down here is the salt. So copy that and paste it in and then what was the hash that the attacker used go back to the pcap for this so we can go back to our pcap and right here when he uh, starts the SSH back door um, we got the hash for that right here copy paste it in and crack the hash using rock you and a cracking tool of your choice what's the password okay guys so now we're gonna have to crack the hash but we're gonna have to crack the hash using the salt we have so we're gonna have to find the correct hash format within hashcat and we're gonna do that by going to hashcat's wiki page all right guys so we're on the hashcat wiki page and from earlier in the ssh backdoor main.go file uh, we saw it uses the uh, SHA-512 encryption method and we're also going to have to use the SALT to crack it so we're going to be looking for something that's SHA-512 with a password and a SALT. So right here we got 1710 SHA-512 with the password and a SALT and looking at how you type this in it looks like the hash is first and then a colon with the SALT at the end so 1710 so we can open up a terminal all right so nano um, hash dot text paste that hash in put our colon mark we're gonna have to grab that salt from the main.go file grab the salt Paste that in, save file. All right, we're gonna be using hashcat and a flag with a zero for a dictionary attack and hash format 1710. And we'll be using the hash.txt and user share word list rocky.txt. Okay, hashcat was able to crack that hash with the salt and we got November 16, so we can copy that and let's go back to try hack me number 16 all right all right task three attack get back in now that the incident is investigated paradox needs someone to take control of the overpass production server again there's flags on the box that overpass can't afford to lose by formatting the server okay the attacker defaced the website what message did they leave as a heading start machine all right, the machine started. So copy that IP address. All right, hacked by Kook Disk Clan. Secure your servers. And uh, I guess it's a cactus. So copy that. Look here. Paste that in. All right, use the information you found previously to hack your way back in. All right, guys, let's get a terminal open. And we can SSH into James. And don't forget port 2222 because it's a non-standard SSH port. And so we got this error, unable to negotiate with 1010-8140 port 2222, no matching host key type found. Their offer SSH RSA. All right, so we get this error because I'm using a newer version of SSH and it no longer offers that RSA uh, key exchange method. So we're gonna have to edit our SSH config file. All right, so we're gonna edit the SSH config file. So sudo nano etsy SSH SSH config, enter, go down here. Add host key algorithms, SSH RSA, save that file, 
And now we should be able to SSH in. November 16. And we got it. All right, so now that we're logged on to the uh, James user through SSH, we can go to his home directory and list the files he has. And right off the bat, we see SUID bash file with the SUID bit set. So um, I went straight off to GTFO bins and looked up bash. Bash SUID. Okay, this example creates a local SUID copy of the binary and runs it to maintain evaluated privileges. To interact with an existing SUID binary, skip the first command and run the program with its original path. So we already have the SUID binary, so we can skip this first command and pretty much just run the second command. So running the bash file with uh, the dash p flag so let's go back over here to our james all right so we'll run the suid bash file with the p flag and we're root so we can cd to the root directory and we have root.txt, so cat root.txt, and there's our root flag. So take that, copy it. Uh, we still gotta grab the user flag. That's kind of backwards, but okay. So let's go to home, James. Text. Get our user flag. And we're done.